All right, Rev Nation Japan here. And what I've done is I've recently purchased a 2004 Mazda RX-8. This is the Series 1. And uh, I just picked this up for a little less than four grand American. And this car is absolutely mint. It has had a few... Uh, a few aftermarket parts put on such as the these wheels uh, Which look pretty nice SSR uh, They got some uh, some wind run uh, Chinese tires on here. It's not they're not bad. They're not that sticky, but I'm gonna get some new tires soon These treads are pretty pretty shallow, but this paint is very nice uh, the hood is aftermarket it's a uh, they got a different color on here as well as these uh, side mirrors. And then the uh, spoiler on the back is also, and those things are have been coated black. But it's a good, it's a good look. It's nice all the way around. There's been no engine modifications other than a, uh, other than a new starter. And everything else is absolutely primo. Now, if we look at the interior, right? Of course, the RX-8 is the last family sports car, boasting the four seats with the suicide doors on the back. But this interior is absolutely clean. There is an aftermarket uh, radio head unit installed. Uh, one of the biggest problems with old RX-8s is the passenger airbag cover being cracked. This one is. Primo, and uh, the previous owner, never, he said he didn't replace any of this stuff. This is all uh, original. So everything looks nice. It's got over 140,000 kilometers on it. The uh, compression test was, was well within standards. Okay, so in my excitement the other day, I forgot to show everybody the uh, engine compartment. So... Go ahead and do that now. There's not a whole lot to see. The engine's it's pretty small. It's a 1.3 liter Wankel rotary. But here you go. Look at that. Now, there is a ton of stuff to look at if you like plastic. Uh, but yeah, so you got your battery, your battery box, which is overly complicated. Uh, this is your air box, this big massive thing. And we pull this up right here and slide it towards the front of the car that's what comes off and there you go there you go the biggest part's the alternator and you get your strut bar right here coolant reservoir and down there you'll see the you'll see the oil filter right past the dipstick that's the engine right there at that bottom that's at the bottom tiny little guy uh, right there. Focus. Ah, uh, Mazda 13B. And there you go. That's the engine. That's all there is to it. All right. Next time I won't forget. Yeah. And this is an absolute blast to drive. Now, I live... Uh, in Inaka, right? I'm up in the mountains, right? The rural area. So I have tons of places to play. Now this is the five-speed manual transmission. And uh, so this is putting out about uh, around 140 uh, horse... Uh, no, that would play, change that. Uh, about 200. So I think it's like 189, 190, something like that. Horsepower. Uh, and 150 foot-pounds of torque now everything about this car is in its revs so this thing needs to rev and it will rev all day 9,000 rpms for the red line there's even a little buzzer to let you know that you need to shift because you can't you can't do it just by listening to it like you can on, on a normal piston engine this thing just it, it winds and it rolls and it's ready to go and I've had an absolute blast so far uh, playing with this vehicle. This 
uh, this the, the the handbrake here. A lot of people had a big problem with this in the U.S. Right? Uh, because well, it was left hand drive in the United States. Left hand drive, the gear shift is the same, but on most vehicles, the the handbrake handle is just directly straight back or maybe a little bit to the left, right? But over here, it's right here. Now, on the right-hand drive, this is absolutely perfect. It's directly parallel with my leg, with my clutch leg. And so, like, shifting gears, which is such a breeze with this clutch and this transmission, and pulling up this e-brake, it's like, it's literally just, boom, it's ready to go. It's, it's, it's uh, almost like muscle memory that it just sits right there when I let go. Um, and so I've, I've got no problems with this whatsoever. This is good. I, I actually, I really love this. And I love the little knuckle buster down here too, um, because it literally puts it in line with your, with your leg that's raised up slightly from being on the pedals. Uh, here you got your center console slides back. You got your two cup holders lifts your, with your leg that's raised up slightly from being on the pedals. Uh, here you got your center console, slides back, you got your two cup holders, lifts up, it's got the little cubby there for your aux port or your 12-volt uh, adapter. Uh, you got another 12-volt adapter in here. I've got some plugs in just to run some my phone charger and stuff like that. Uh, in the back seat, there is another cup holder right there, right, and another little cubby right there. And in the back center, that just kind of folds down to get to the trunk. Oh, I've also got the flat key. Like this thing is, that's, I like this. This is neat. Hold it down, trunk pops. The trunk space is actually really decent. It's got a spare tire kit, not a spare tire, but like it's got like some fix a flat and a little pump. Um, underneath here you have the scissor jack, scissor jack, tow hooks, and then here's the, the little twisty handle for the scissor jack, and that sits down. So yeah, there's actually a ton of room. The only problem is this opening is not wide at all. I don't even know if a standard suitcase can fit through there. You'd need some, you'd need some good geometry to roll it through. But it's solid. It's good. I like it. I'm not using this to go cross country with. I'm using this to play. And it is a lot of fun. So one more time around. Uh, there's not much more I can say. I bought this car really cheap. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. The only thing I might look into doing is maybe moving my license plate off to the side and and to get more airflow because with the really small grill I feel like that I feel like it blocks a ton of air a ton of airflow coming through there but yeah here I go this is my toy and I'm having such a blast running with this thing dual exhaust it sounds so good all right I'll go ahead and crank it up for you Right up. All right, so they got your gauges. Right. Oh, it's also got a ETC uh, card reader installed here, which is the, the Japanese version of like Bay Pass or Fast Track or Easy Pass, Sun Pass. All those, all those uh, little cards that you can buy to get you uh, on the uh, toll roads. Uh, like I said, we're looking at 140 kilometers 146,000 kilometers and you got the big tack in the center with the digital uh, KPH uh, a little digital readout right next to it the fuel gauge now that is something that is something that's a little bit disgusting is it took a hundred dollars to fill up this tank and it uses premium and it eats gas like, like it's its favorite thing in the world to do. But, you know, with 
with uh, with great fun comes poor cost <laughs> it's, uh, it's not my money saver this is not my eco car let's see if we can get a listen it's very very quiet very very quiet even when I wrap it it's pretty quiet uh, all right there she is in all her glory Yeah, I can't recommend getting one of these cars enough. They're cheap, they're fun. Uh, if you're looking to play, this is it. I mean, if you want to daily drive it, you can. It's just gonna burn through your wallet as far as gas goes, but man, I cannot recommend driving uh, driving uh, an RX-8 enough at least once or twice just to try it. But this is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is Rev Nation Japan wishing you uh, good driving and all that.